Hi, welcome to this lecture, which is part two of inheritance and polymorphism. So, in part one of inheritance and polymorphism, we learned at uh, we learned about inheritance, the technique uh, in object-oriented programming, and uh, we did uh, write some programs and try to understand in which cases we can have the case of inheritance and how do we use inheritance, how should we implement that. And the process we learned about a few concepts like overriding, method overriding and hiding. So let's continue um, discussion and see, uh, look at more examples and try to understand this even better. So we have already seen uh, overriding in, in the methods and overriding happens when you have the same method signature uh, in the child class as you have in the parent class. So if you have a scenario where uh, you have a method written in the parent class and you write the same kind of method in the child class with the same signature, then this is called overriding the method. So let's look at this example which we have seen already. Uh, so now we have the parent class as person and assume that in the person class we uh, have defined a method called reset. So at the level of the person, if you remember, we had the data members like name and age and then we had written some getters and setters, uh, one constructor and now let's add another method at the level of person. So in the person class, we are writing this method called reset and the purpose of this method reset is to reset the age of the person to zero. Now, let's look at uh, the child class of this class person. So in that example, which we have already seen, we created two derived classes for person class. One of the class was student and the other one was employee. So let's look at student only and try to see what we can do. So here, there is a case, the way you have written reset method for the parent class which is person class you can also write a version of reset method in your child class which is student class so if you're writing a reset method in your uh, student class then at the level of the student uh, you have one more data member you will add the gpa so gpa is an additional property uh, of a class student so the student class is derived from person class. So the student class will have data members as name, age, and uh, the GPA. So GPA is a um, data member that we are adding uh, to this class student. Now when you have to reset uh, an object which is of type student, then you will have to uh, reset the GPA as well. So there are two ways of doing that. So what you're looking at right here, there are two um, versions of the reset method which you can write in the student class. So the first one that is probably something you may get very easily is to make use of set age method which exists in the parent class which is person class. So set age is a setter method in uh, the person class which is public. So you can directly access that in the reset method of a student and you can call set age and set the age to zero that's that is how you can change the age and since the GPA is a data member which is in a student class so you can directly access that and you can set that to zero so no problem here so in this discussion uh, we should I should make it clear to you that uh, the data members are private in respective classes so in the person class, the data members which are age and name are private and similarly for student class, GPA is private. So if you have to uh, set the value of age to zero, you cannot do that directly. You will have to use the setter method. Good. So this was the simpler approach. Let's look at more sophisticated approach to reset this is the way we can reset it. So how can we reset? Well, 
there is already a reset method which has been written in the parent class person and if you call that reset method of person class from the reset method of uh, the student class then anyway it will take care of resetting the age to zero so when you say super dot reset right here so super means you are referencing the parent class and which is the parent class the parent class is person and you are right here at the level of the student so you can um, call the reset method of the parent class and that's what we are doing here super dot reset so this will invoke the reset method that you have in the parent class which is person and will reset the age to zero good and now you have to only take care of the GPA all right which is not a problem you are in the student class and you can reset that to zero okay uh, good so this is an example of where you can call a method of the parent class using the super keyword till now we have been using super uh, keyword just for calling the parent constructor right now this example that you're looking at here we are using super as a reference and we are referencing the parent class okay and uh, I have already typed this program on sublime and I'll uh, walk you through that program after a few slides so now this is an interesting question which I will show you in that program also so this question is about the fact that if you remove super right here and just put that as reset, what will happen? So you need to think about these scenarios. So to answer that question, like what will happen anyway, we will do that in demo. If you do not specify super and you simply say reset, then that reset means you are invoking this method itself, which will cause recursion. Okay, so recursion is a scenario where a program calls itself. So here it will be a recursive call. And since this was not written, um, this method was not written with recursion in mind. So it will continue to run for uh, infinitely. So it will be kind of ca caught in the infinite loop. Okay, so yeah, there is a bug if you remove super right here and just write reset. All right, good. So now let me t uh, tell you about a, a very interesting class which is called object class right here. So what is this object class? This object class is the ultimate parent class in Java. Okay, so that every class that you write is derived from this uh, ultimate parent class which is called as object. So this O is capital object. Now you might be wondering like where is this class being defined? so every class belongs to a package so this object class that you have belongs to java.lang package okay so it is it, this object class that i'm referring to and i'm telling you that this is the ultimate parent class it belongs to java.lang package okay so you can say java.lang.object if you want to be specific if you want to convey that this uh, class is defined in a package so you should say java.lang.object good now this class also has a number of methods implemented now whenever you create a class so it is advised that in the class that you're creating you should override these three methods that we already have defined in the object class so what are these three methods these are clone method equals method and two string method so this clone method is slightly complicated so we can just look at it like what it does it creates and returns a copy of this object okay so just keep this in mind that if for some reason you have to create a copy of the object that you already have you should be invoking the clone and you need to define this clone in the class that you're creating Okay, so if you are creating a class, say like circle, it will be advisable that you write a clone method for the circle class also. So if you do that, then in the process, you will override the clone method which already exists in the object class. Similarly, you can write equals method as well. And when you write an equals, 
then this equals will override the equals method which we already have in object class. So I believe that you have already used equals because when I was discussing the strings, I said that if you compare two string variables, then that comparison would be at the reference level. And you know, you might have uh, two string variables with the same content in there. And if you just compare those string variables, probably you'll be comparing the reference and that may not result in the real comparison of string values. So for that reason, you should use equals method in a string. All right. So this equals method that you have in the string class is overriding the equals method which we have in the object class. So when I'm discussing string class, I should um, uh, explain this thing to you that even the string class that we have uh, used is a subclass of this ultimate object class. So every class that you create, even the circle class that we created is um, a derived class from object. We did not explicitly say that public class circle extends object, but it is implicitly um, uh, established that uh, uh, the circle class that you create without even mentioning that it extends from object by default it is extending from object okay good so that was about equals so it is your responsibility to write an equals method in whichever class you are creating so that you could somehow check whether two objects of that same uh, same class are equal or not Okay, so you might think about writing equals method for a circle class. When should you say whether two classes are um, two objects of the circle class are equal or not? Probably you will compare the radius. And if the radius of the two objects uh, of the circle class is same, you should say that, you know, these are equal. And uh, we should pay attention to uh, the return type here for equals. Since we have already used it for in, in uh, the uh, context of string. So when two string uh, objects are equal, uh, the, the return uh, value is true, which is Boolean. And if these are not equal, the return type is false. So that's how you should be defining or um, overriding equals method in your respective class. Its return type should be Boolean. Now, how about two string? Well, two string is a method which we have kind of, you know, started writing. I believe I have given you a demo where I was using a two string method. So right here, why is this two string method reappearing? Well, now we are looking at two string method from a different angle. Now we are um, telling you this fact that this two string method already exists in the object class. Okay, so for our class, whenever we write two string method, we overwrite the two string method which is already available in the ultimate parent class which is the object class okay so how should we uh, override this method well you need to define a public two string method and its return type should be string that's how we have been doing and what will it do it will return the string representing the object okay so it is up to us how do we define two string but when we define a two string method, we should um, attempt to return the meaningful information about the object, like probably the data members. Okay, good. So these three methods are the ones that we are supposed to, uh, you know, override whenever we define a new class. And there are other methods as well. There are eight other methods which we will not look into in this course. All right, so now the things will be a little more uh, interesting. And I mentioned about this example in uh, my previous lecture when I was introducing uh, you to the inheritance. So uh, let's look at this, right? Let me uh, walk you through this code and then I'll explain to you like what is important here. So let's start with the same example. Our parent class is person. And in the person, uh, we have the data members, which is uh, name and age. So if you have to write a two string method for person class, then you should return the name of the person as well as the age. So that's what we are doing here. We have public string, two string, return the name and the age. 
Okay, so uh, that will be written in the form of a string. Now, you have a um, um, child class which is derived from this parent class which is person and for the child class uh, student which is derived from person you need to write a two string method for student as well. So now when you are writing the two string method for the student now you can be intelligent here. What do I mean? Well since the student is derived from the person class the student class will also inherit the data members like name and age from the parent class person. So when you are calling the two string method for the student object, uh, the, the name and age should also be printed out. Now so what can we do here when we are writing the two string method for the student class? Well this has to be the same public string, two string. Okay. But inside this method what we can do, we can call the two string method which we have already written for the parent class. Okay, but how should you call the two string method which exists in the parent class? Well, we will use this super keyword. Alright, and what we will do, we will say super dot two string. Uh, super means the reference to the parent class and then with the period two string you are invoking the two string method which exists in the parent class which is person and then whatever string value you are returning let's add more information what do you mean by what do i mean by more information well let's you know it's a string let's add some more information in that string what is it the gpa and its value all right so ultimately what will happen when you invoke Two string method for a student object uh, the value that you get printed out will have the name of the student age of the student which you are ret retrieving by calling the two string of the parent class and uh, the GPA which you are adding right here okay so this is an interesting example and this should answer your question which was about how should we invoke the method in the parent class and in which case we should uh, invoke the method of the parent class okay so here it makes a lot of sense because it's very similar to the reset uh, method example that I had in the, in the first few slides in today's lecture if you do not say super dot two string then it will be a recursive call here all right so we need super dot two string to make it explicit that we are invoking the two string method which exists in our parent class good so now we have a similar example uh, using the same concept right now let's look at the two string method which we will write uh, for the employee class and the class employee is also a derived class from the person class so you should declare public class employee extends person public string to string which means you are writing a two string method for uh, the employee class and right here again we are exploiting the two string method which we have already written once so this is an interesting example where you can also see how um, handy this inheritance is okay so since you have already written the two string at the parent level you can reuse that two string to print all those data members which we have inherited from the parent class which is person so you'll say return super dot two string plus salary and the salary value okay interesting example nice uh, so now you you're looking at a tester method which we have written just to check uh, how will this two string work for us when we have when we are using inheritance and we are we are defining the two string method um, by in the child, uh, child class by calling the two string of the parent class so here you declare um, more more is a person uh, you know the type of the person uh, the more object is person class and you are calling the constructor for person and you created a person instance good similarly you created larry and you created it 
Now Curly, Larry is a student and Curly is an employee. Now since you have written two string methods, you can invoke two string on these objects. You can call more.toString and you'll get the information about more. You'll get more stooge age is zero because we did not specify age. Similarly, um, you can invoke uh, the two string method for Larry who's a student. So you should get the GPA as well. So Larry stooge is being zero, GPA is 0, 0.0. Now, curly being an employee, when you invoke curly, okay, so there are two ways to invoke two string method. Either explicitly, the way we are doing here and here, with a period and two string invocation, or you can just leave the name of the object. It will anyway uh, call the two string method. So, in this example for curly, we are implicitly calling two string method. So here you'll get the information for curly stooge is zero and salary is zero. Okay, yeah, so you can try these examples. Uh, well, what I should do now is let me take you to the program that I have written. Uh, I will not be writing that from scratch to save some time, but anyway, I'll walk you through that. So here you have, uh, you know, a student class. And student class extends person. Okay, so this is based on the first few slides. So what I have done in this case, again I am writing both the classes in the same file, uh, which I will discourage. But here the purpose is demo and the discussion. But in practice, you should create two separate classes. So since I have you, I have saved this in the student dot Java. So my student class is being made public okay so let me take you to the person class first so it's the same person class which we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture okay has couple of data members name and age these are private the way they should be then we have just one constructor uh, which is taking uh, the string value for the name of this uh, the person Again, you might wonder why did I not use this and all those things. I'll say yes, ideally I should have made this as, you know, name and here I should say this dot age is equal to zero, this dot name is equal to name. Only when I call the init name as name. Well, that's, that's the way we should have done, but this is fine too because here uh, the purpose is to discuss different uh, thing. Okay, good. So now in the constructor, you will uh, set up the name and age is being zero. We have a getter and uh, we have um, get name, get age, and then we have set age and reset method. Okay, so I will not go into the details of this implementation because we have already done that in the previous uh, lecture when I was, uh, you know, introducing inheritance to you people. Good. Now the only thing that I added are right here, the reset method, okay. So the reset method that I have written for the class person will reset the age to zero, okay. We will come to two string later. Uh, let's pay attention to the reset. So the reset at the person uh, in the person class is resetting the value of age to zero, great. Now I am uh, deriving a class named student from the person class. All right, so let me take it here. That's how usually I write. Okay, so the student class is derived from person class. You added another data member, GPA. These things we have done in the past. Okay, so you write um, the constructor uh, for student. And here, this is an interesting case. I may like to comment right here invoking the parent uh, parent constructor all right so how are we doing that super and the parentheses in the parentheses we are passing on the string which will uh, initialize uh, the name of the student object to that specific name and for that we will take the help of the super constructor uh, super constructor which is the constructor right here 
required. So this will be invoked, which will set the age to zero and the name to whatever name you are passing on. GPA you can leave at 0.0. .0. We will reset that later or set that later. You have a getter for GPA. You have a setter for GPA, which I explained in the previous class. Now this is interesting, right? We are adding two more methods here. Reset method and the two string method. Two string method later. Let's pay attention to reset. Okay, so what am I doing here? Well, in the reset method, which is at the level of the student, I should reset GPA to zero. And for the for resetting the other data members, which I'm anyway inheriting, I mean a student is inheriting from the parent class person. I should take care of resetting that by using the super reset. Super dot reset. Okay, what does it mean? If I say super dot reset, then that means from the student class, I'm invoking the reset right here. Okay, and how is that possible? By using super keyword. So I should comment it out here. Invoking the reset method of the parent class all right so see uh, how do we invoke a method in the parent class by super dot reset or whichever method you have whereas when you have to invoke a constructor then super with the parenthesis super with so these are the two uh, different statements that i would like you to uh, really understand the statement on line number four and the statement on line number 19 statement on line number four is invoking parent constructor and the statement on line number 19 is invoking uh, a math from the super uh, class or the parent class good so let's um, improve our understanding of invoking the parent method with the super with one more example now let me take you to the two string method it was already there in the lecture slides but let's you know one more time go over that uh, using this example so right here we are in the parent class person and we have written a two string method public string to string that should be the uh, what do we say uh, signature it has to be like this two string method should be public it should return a string uh, representation and we write that as two string and its um, argument list is zero now what are we returning name name and age this age okay so the two string method of the of the person class will return the name of the person and age of the person Good. So, two strings is written for the parent class, which is person class. How should I write two string method for the student class? Well, let's have a look at that. Right here, uh, the signature should be saying because we are overriding the two string method. So, it's an interesting case. You are overriding the two string method of the person class, but you are also using the implementation of the two string method in the uh, person class so what's your two string here at the level of the student well you are adding this information of GPA and um, GPA to the information which you're getting from the parent two string method so when you say super dot two string that means you are invoking um, uh, the two string method of the person class okay Good. So, again, you know, please practice that. The source code is available on uh, the lecture slides. You just need to copy that on your IDE and try that. Play with it and, uh, you know, make sure that you understand these concepts. Now, what I will be doing here, let me compile this program. Java C student dot Java. Good. Uh, well, I should have shown you what I'm doing in the main method here. In the main method, I'm creating an instance of 
uh, the student object so student st is equal to new student and I'm calling the student as John Smith I'm setting the age of the John Smith as 19 years a GPA I'm setting as 3.75 and then I am calling the two string method okay so st dot two string or st that's the same thing and then I am resetting that and after resetting I am printing it out so what should happen let's run that Java student student okay so the first instance that you're getting is the the first output that you're getting right here is the result of uh, the system dot out dot print talent on line number 30 and then the other one is for line number 32 so since you have invoked reset method of the student class okay so in the in the recent method of the student class you are invoking the reset of the person class to reset the age to zero and here anyway you are resetting the GPA to 0, 0 all right so you get these things now one of the reason why I am um, taking you over this program is that I had a question in my lecture slide my question was about this thing uh, let's go to reset and the question was what will happen if you do not keep super all right if you're saying just reset from the reset uh, method of your class student you're not specifying the fact that uh, we are invoking reset of the parent class all right so what will happen well let's run that okay no compiler error good news what happened okay so we were uh, caught in an infinite loop why as I explained to you right here you are invoking this method itself you are invoking this method itself and you're caught in an infinite loop okay so we also call that as stack overflow recursive call leading into infinite loop all right so if you don't specify super you are stuck in an infinite loop which will result in stack overflow so that was my purpose of um, uh, taking you to this uh, program good so we have um, done this uh, already right let me take you to uh, the next concept uh, multiple inheritance so what is a multi what is multiple inheritance so for that thing anyway i have a slide in the, in in the next uh, i have the next slide where i'll show you what is multiple inheritance the question could be that do we have multiple inheritance in java or not so the answer to that is no so let me try this thing okay let me use a pen and try to create one example where i will show that you know what is this multiple inheritance uh, let me make a very abstract example okay so here you have one class and you have another class all right and then you have a chat class let me call par1 as the parent 1 par2 as the parent 2 and then you write child as the child so let's use the notation that we have in inheritance UML so we are thinking about a case where a child may uh, uh, inherit from more than one parent if this is a case then we'll call this as multiple inheritance this is multiple inheritance inheritance multiple inheritance means you have multiple immediate parent parent one parent two these are two parents and this child is uh, inheriting from these two parents at one time now in Java you cannot have multiple inheritance at the level of classes so you can't have class as parent one another class as parent two and you have the third class child which you are writing as a you know public class child extends parent one parent two 
that is disallowed right so in java we do not have multiple inheritance okay it might be possible in other cases but not in java so that's the question and that's the reason you see multiple inheritance do we have multiple inheritance in java plain answer is no okay so um, i should say not in java Java we cannot have that right assuming that these are all classes okay yeah I'm making it clear that uh, we have classes because there's something interesting called interfaces uh, at the level of interfaces you can have multiple inheritance but not at the level of classes good all right so with that information let's move on and try to understand like what do we have in this slide so you have uh, well, we have created another subclass, which is instructor. So class instructor is derived from employee. You can do that. And we are adding one more information to the instructor. We are telling that this is, uh, class will have a data member called department. You can keep that. So now you are writing the constructor for instructor. Here the first statement is the call to the parent constructor. Now, I might ask this question that when you're saying super init name, which constructor you are calling? Is it the constructor that we have in uh, the ultimate parent class, which is uh, object? But uh, here in this example, if I say uh, ultimate parent, then I mean the person class. So when you're saying super init name, are you calling the constructor that we have in the person class? Or are we calling the constructor that we have in the employee class? Okay, so the answer to that is we are invoking the constructor in the employee class. Okay, you can only access uh, directly or, you know, using super or you can invoke the constructor only of the immediate parent class. You cannot bypass your immediate parent and call your grandparent. No, that is not allowed in uh, inheritance in Java. Good. So anyway, uh, you, you're calling the constructor of employee here. Then you're setting up the department of the instructor as not none assigned. Good. Now you have uh, the getter for department. You have the setter for department. Then you have written two string method. So how do you write to string? Again, you are exploiting the to string method which we have written, at, um, you know, in the parent class, which is employee class. So you will invoke the to string method of the employee class, and in employee class, anyway, we are exploiting the to string method and which has been defined in person. Okay, so th this will give you some idea, like how, how handy is this inheritance okay and right now since we are learning this concept we are working on toy example but when uh, you you're working somewhere uh, in in a software company uh, as a software engineer probably you'll be dealing with more complicated problems involving inheritance and which will definitely make your life a lot easier good so now in the main method we create an instance of instructor and uh, the instructor's name has been provided. Then you call the, uh, the me, which is, you know what, and the call to uh, the two string method and you'll get the uh, corresponding output for the particular instructor. All right. So here we have Professor Makina's information. Let's move on. Now inheritance diagram, right? So we um, have been drawing inheritance diagram. In fact, the one that I created here is an invalid inheritance diagram in Java, but still it's a, a diagram. Uh, okay, it's kind of inheritance diagram, which is invalid. Now, um, when we think about um, hierarchy, inheritance hierarchy, then, uh, and we say that we have a parent class and we have the child class, then we immediately start thinking about another hierarchy, which is family tree hierarchy. All right, so here we have to understand the difference between uh, the inheritance hierarchy that you see in Java and the family tree hierarchy that we have. 
there is a difference actually so we need to understand that so as I explained to you in the previous um, slide with the help of the uh, diagram that I created uh, in Java you are allowed to have just one immediate parent you cannot have uh, more than one parent more than one immediate parent but you can have uh, multiple ancestors so there is no limit at uh, in, in ancestors so I will explain those things to you with the help of um, the program and the diagrams that we have in the next few slides okay so the question could be is it a valid uh, uh, wait a second I want my pointer back okay so is it a valid um, inheritance hierarchy in Java well we need to evaluate let's look at each class so instructor has just one parent class we are fine employee has just one parent class we are fine similar is the case with the student so this is perfectly fine as goes the inheritance hierarchy of Java we do not have multiple parent at any level so uh, we can have ancestors right so what do I mean by ancestor uh, let's look at instructor the parent of instructor is employee okay and employees parent is person so person is the ancestor of instructor okay so for um, your grandparents we can call we can use this term as ancestor and you can you can have so many uh, ancestors it depends like where exactly you are in the inheritance hierarchy all right okay so yes we here we have two ancestors probably you can call your parent also as an ancestor one and two now this is the family tree right so in family tree we have something like this two parents for Alvis and the other person uh, we have two parents okay similarly for uh, this guy we have two parents so in family tree we do have uh, this thing which is called um, crossing all right so this crossing will happen when you have two parents and this is not allowed in Java inheritance okay so family tree is slightly different what can we have in Java here you go right so here we are looking at the class hierarchy that exists in Java so no surprise object as the ultimate parent because I have been telling you in this lecture that you know there's this guy called object which is the ultimate parent class in Java class hierarchy so look at other um, class like this container class its ultimate parent is component and component is derived from object okay so everywhere even at the level of abstract button uh, it has just one parent which is JC component this guy do have two child and uh, that is okay all right so you won't see uh, crossing anywhere no uh, no crisscrossing so this is perfect this is what we have in Java um, inheritance hierarchy let's take this example of J frame for the reason that we will try to find out how many ancestors do we have for J frame so ultimate parent of J frame is frame class but frame window container component as well as object so these are one two three four five one two three four five so J frame has five ancestors okay so I believe these uh, terms are making sense to you now uh, we learned about UML as well when we were learning about classes and object so now we should be concerned about this thing like you know I do we did learn about the symbol that will uh, denote this inheritance relationship how can we use that at the level of UML so well if you know the UML of person which I believe you should know because we have done a lot of exercise so here the UML is for person now you create a UML for uh, the student as well and then use this arrow which uh, with the triangle head as the uh, relationship which will show that student is inherited from person class okay and here you should pay attention to the fact that when we are at the level of student we do not repeat these data members which we have in the parent class although we are inheriting but we are not repeating those 
data members at the level of student. Same is the case with the methods as well. Okay, we will not repeat those. We will keep that in the parent class. We should only write those properties that includes the data member as well as the methods which are applicable to the child class. Okay, good. So now um, let's move on uh, and look at this example uh, which we used to start uh, the discussion on inheritance. Okay, so we had mammal class, the parent class, and we derived two subclasses, the cat and dog from there. And then you can go on, you can have the breeds for cat, and similarly you can have the breeds for the dog as well. And using that you can have, a, you know, an inheritance hierarchy, which we are looking at right here. So it's the same figure being repeated. All right. Okay, so I will not repeat these things because anyway, I have a demo which I will do and I will walk you through the code, which again I have written and I'll just run that. Now, we are doing some uh, interesting stuff here. So, uh, you need to revise, right? You need to revise these concepts. You need to keep this thing in mind that this is our hierarchy. Okay, so if when you create cat, then it should be derived from mammal. So you'll say public cat extends mammal, public dog extends mammal. Okay, so when you have done all those things, then let's see what will happen. One thing at a time. Now, what is this here? You're saying cat Garfield is equal to new cat. So that means uh, this Garfield is an object of type cat. You can do that. You have declared, uh, you have defined the cat class, which is uh, derived from the mammal class. Perfectly fine. I don't see any problem here. Okay. How about the second statement? Odi is a dog object uh, because you're using the name of the class as dog Odi, and you're doing the dog. You're using the dog constructor. Fine. You created a dog object. Great. Now you're invoking make sound method for Garfield and the make sound method for uh, Ode. And Garfield is a cat and Ode is a dog. So since we have done, we have used inheritance and we redefined or uh, we should uh, say uh, override it, the uh, make sound method in the respective class, so we should not expect any surprise. Uh, Garfield being a cat will make the sound of a cat and Odie being a dog will make the sound of a dog. Okay, fine. So there should not be any surprise. But here this is something which should, uh, you know, uh, make you think. Because here we are not doing what we have done already. Okay, why? Because, uh, you know, let's try to understand the left hand side of the assignment first and then the right hand side of the assignment. So on the left hand side, you are saying that uh, this object M is of kind mammal, but on the right hand side, using you are using a cat constructor. You should have used a mammal constructor, but you are using cat constructor. Now this is little uh, strange situation where on the left hand side the class is different, and on the right hand side the constructor that you are using is different. Okay. So the point is, is it allowed? That should be the first question that should come to you. Come to you. Is it allowed? Because uh, our class and constructors are not matching at all. In these two cases, uh, the class and the constructor were matching. Class and constructors were matching. But here, the class is different. Constructor is different. What will happen to my make sound? Well, the answer to that is interesting. And which is uh, uh, which will uh, take us to the concept called polymorphism. Okay, so what will happen in this case? In this case, uh, you will get the sound of a cat. Okay, so you'll have a lot of questions like why do we have this feature? It's making our life too complicated. Why should this be allowed? Well, the answer to that is that this concept of polymorphism which I will explain using uh, this example and also few definition is very, very vital in object-oriented programming, that too in Java. Okay, so this is one of the 
strongest feature of Java programming polymorphism so here you go we have the definition right here what is polymorphism let me read that and then I will explain so polymorphism is the ability of a language to have duplicate method names in an inheritance hierarchy and then to decide which method is um, appropriate to call depending on the class of the object to which the method is applied okay so back to your previous uh, to this interesting example here only when you keep this kind of uh, uh, declaration or statement where uh, your object is being declared as um, of type the parent class maven is the parent class right so on the left hand side the class should be the parent class and the right hand side you have the class which is the child class cat is a child class maven is a parent class so this order is important you cannot change this order if you change this order then your in uh, your polymorphism will not work so for polymorphism this order is important what's this order on the left hand side you should have let me you know use my pen right here if that helps in our discussion so this thing is important on the left hand side you should have the parent class and on the right hand side you should have child this is important right on the left hand side you cannot change the order you can't change left here uh, you know uh, and make the child on the left hand side and the parent on the right hand side no that is uh, not allowed all right so if you have this kind of um, uh, statement then only um, polymorphism will work now uh, what do we have we have a make sound defined for mammal also we have a make sound defined for a cat also now whenever you have a statement like this and you're invoking m dot make sound then the make sound method which we have defined for cat will be executed will work okay so that's what we mean by polymorphism one more time polymorphism is the ability of a language to have duplicate method names in the inheritance hierarchy so in the hierarchy we had mammal class as the parent class we defined make sound for mammal class then we define make sound for cat and dog as well so you you are having duplicate method names or duplicate uh, method signatures in the hierarchy now which uh, method should be run it all depends on the class of object to which it is applied so what do we mean by the class of the object well the class of the object is cat all right so you should say like you know how can you say that the class of object m is cat you are declaring that as mammal well that's something which i will discuss in next few slides okay so it's the actual class of m is not mammal the actual class of m depends on the constructor that you're using and since you're calling the constructor for cat so the actual class of m is cat it's not mammal okay so you should ask like why we can't keep cat here why did you put uh, mammal well if you put cat then you cannot have that flexibility uh, of of the polymorphism okay so uh, the message is let's study little more okay in the next few lectures you will understand that why we had to do it this way all right okay so we will be gaining a lot by uh, by doing it this way the polymorphism only works if you do it this way all right good so now back to the assignment so what is the assignment we can always assign a derived class to any parent class variable okay and the derived class why can that happen why should that happen because the derived class is a parent object well uh, I need to explain this thing right uh, so uh, let me try writing here okay uh, so the same example I won't be adding anything new um, so here I should say mammal and mammal m is equal to new cat 
Okay, this is polymorphism and it is allowed. Now what we are we are saying that we can always assign a derived class to a parent class variable. So what is it? M is a class variable, right? Class variable. And the variable type is mammal. Okay, class variable type is, is mammal. Okay, so class variable type is mammal, but the value that you have, okay, uh, well, uh, wait a second, we can always assign a derived class to any parent class variable. So this is M is the parent class variable and you can assign an object, right? So when you do, do new cat, that's where you're creating an object of the cat type. And that object can be assigned to the parent class variable okay so this m since you're saying a mammal m so the variable type of m is mammal but the actual type of m is cat because the actual type depends on the constructor you can always do this kind of a de of um, assignment where on the right hand side you should have the derived class okay on the right hand side you should have a derived class and why should that make sense well, think about it. Cat is a mammal, right? Cat is a mammal, so cat has all those properties which we have defined in mammal. Cat is a specialized mammal, where cat has all the uh, properties of mammal. So if you look at the class definitions in the core, then you'll find that in cat we are adding more properties than we have in mammal. Okay, so this makes sense because cat is a mammal, but you cannot change this order because mammal is not a cat, right? All mammals are not cat, but all cats are mammal. So this is one way to understand this thing. So mammal m is equal to new cat, what, what I have written. Cat meets, uh, meets all the mammals criteria plus cat specific features. Okay, so it should make sense now. But we cannot change the order, right? So as I was saying, you cannot do cat c is equal to new mammal because on the right hand side, we are only allowed to have the derived uh, class object. Okay, why we should not be allowed? Because you know, when you're doing this assignment, you're saying cat c is equal to new mammal, then it means that whatever you have in the right hand side should have all the features of cat to c. So C expects to point to an object with all of cat's feature. That is not the case, right? There's no guarantee that mammals has all the features of a cat, okay? So this will not work and that's the case, right? You know, in polymorphism, you cannot change this order. So this order is important. Now, when you have this kind of a hierarchy, then which version of the method should be invoked, right? So in that example, if you remember, uh, we are saying m dot make sound, but uh, m is, let me take you back to that slide, right? Yeah. So we are trying to answer this question that when you have this strange kind of statements, uh, where, you, where you're using polymorphism, and then you're doing m dot make sound, okay? So which version of make sound should work? Is it the make sound at the mammal level or is it the make sound at the cat level? So that's the answer we are, uh, that's the answer that we, we are trying to find. That's the question we are uh, trying to answer. So here, all right, so the answer to that is that the cat's version will work, okay? So suppose that mammal and cat both define a make sound method then the cat's version overrides the mammal's version. Okay. All right. So here we have some examples, and anyway, I will have this in my demo as well. So when you're creating mammal m is equal to new mammal, no surprise, no polymorphism. Why? Because on the left hand side, as well as on the right hand side, we have the same class information. M is the mammal class, and the constructor is a mammal constructor. No polymorphism. Right here on the left hand side, x has x has been declared as the mammal variable mammal reference variable but in x we are assigning the cat object here we have the uh, polymorphism 
and when you say x dot make sound it will be the sound of the cat all right so uh, one more time i'll take you to the basic rules and after that we'll take you to uh, the program and i'll explain uh, to you how that program is working every variable has two types okay this is very interesting and the most important slide every variable has two types the reference type and the actual type okay and the reference type determines what methods can be invoked can be called and the actual type determines which version of these methods are called so um, in today's lecture we will not have the example for the first point but we have the example for the second point first point I will uh, come to that in my next video lecture Alright, so let me take the same example and probably I should take you back. Okay, so here, um, alright, you know uh, for this M, it has two types. Alright, so on the left hand side, uh, the mammal that you have is called its reference type reference type okay and this cat is its actual type so that's what we mean every variable like M has two types the reference type which is defined by the class the class will define the reference type or the declared type okay so we can call that reference or declared type so this M uh, variable has its reference type as mammal or its declared type as uh, mammal whereas the actual type of M is cat okay reference type is mammal actual type is cat all right so every variable has two types reference type which is the declared type or the actual type now the actual type will determine which version of those methods are to be called so you know what when you said um, m dot make sounds then this actual type will determine and its actual type is cat so the sound that you get is the sound of a cat all right so i believe okay fine so uh, let's look at these two examples again uh, when you say mammal m is equal to new mammal then the reference as well as the actual types are both mammal okay on the left hand side is the reference type uh, which is mammal on the right hand side depends on the constructor so here you have the constructor as mammal so actual type is also mammal in the second example this is an interesting case where the reference type is mammal but its actual type is cat so if you say x dot make sound then you get the sound of the cat all right so i will stop right here in terms of the lecture slides but i will take you to the demo that i have written so this is my test memo uh well i should have let me open the memo.java Okay, so in the mammal class, we have just one uh, variable, which is boolean. Then you have uh, the make sound method, which is unknown sound. And we did uh, use this class, right? In the very first uh, lecture on inheritance, I started with this example. So probably I um, use that class. Then from mammal class, we have a cat class. Okay, cat class extends mammal. It has... Uh, you know two data members additional to cat class which is has class and for color then you are overriding the make sound method of the mammal class and let's see uh, you're saying that public class cat extends mammal that's way you are using inheritance I created this new class which is dog class which was not tough in this case it's very simple you are writing public class dog extends mammal and then you're creating a make sound for mammal yes, sorry make sound for dog which is the sound of a dog uh, we use Persian as well and in the Persian Persian is a um, the child class of cat 
okay so it has um, it is hiding the fur color I have discussed this in the in the previous lecture so I will not um, talk about that too much and then you have make sound for the Persian class the interesting thing is right here okay so what should I do let me go step by step okay then let me comment everything out and let's only pay attention to these three statements I should say Java C test mammal test mammal dot Java okay and then you will say Java test Okay, so unknown sound, mammal sound, what's the mammal sound, unknown sound, and why should I get the sound of a mammal, I don't have any polymorphism at all, M has its reference type as mammal, and the actual type as mammal, okay, so good, I wasn't expecting any surprise right here, now let's go ahead and, you know, uncomment the whole section, because it's very simple, just like the way you had the first three statements now I want to check the cat sound I'm using a cat um, you know this statement where C uh, is the reference variable its reference type is cat and its actual type is cat too so again no polymorphism no surprise it should be making the sound of a cat then uh, I created a Persian cat object actual uh, its reference type is Persian class and its actual type is Persian as well no polymorphism I should uh, get the sound of Persian cat similarly for D um, reference variable uh, its declare type as well as the actual type is same which is dog so it should make the sound of a dog all right so I will run this thing again Okay, mammal sound is unknown sound, cat sound is the sound of a cat, Persian sound, uh, cat sound is his. I should have a, a, you know, print here just to say that, you know, this is the sound of a cat. But mm, if you want, let me put that. Okay. Dog sound. Okay, so the dog has the dog sound. Alright, so this was simple, right? No polymorphism at all. Now we will do the experiment. Experimenting now. How am I experimenting? M. What is M? M is of type mammal. Okay, so uh, for this statement which I have on the line number 16, you should keep in mind line number 3 also. Why? Because here I'm using the M which has already been defined as of type mammal. Okay, so mammal M is equal to new cat. I cannot do that again because I've already done that here. Okay, so the reference type of M is mammal, but its actual type is cat. Then when I say M dot make sound, I should get the sound of a cat. Okay. Now, what I'm doing here, C, what is C? C is cat. Alright, so for this statement, in order to understand statement number 18, you should keep statement number 7 in mind because C has the reference type as cat. So, can I have cat C is equal to new person? Yes, you can do that. Why? Because on the right hand side, you should have a child class. Okay, as long as you have it, you are following the polymorphism and you are good. Alright, so when you experimented, uh, you know, you got the sound of the cat and the sound of the uh, Persian cat. Okay, so let me do something which is not allowed. What is not allowed? Well, can I have something like that? Uh, cat. CT 
is equal to new uh, mammal okay we don't need to you know try anything I believe the compiler won't be happy right here because you cannot have a parent class on the right hand side okay you, you should have the same class constructor as you have on the left hand side or the um, the derived class constructor on the right hand side so if I run this see I have the compiler error right here okay so incompatible types mammal cannot be converted to cat why because mammal is the parent okay so these are some interesting things i hope you followed my lecture and i will stop right here all right and thank you so much bye bye